Yes, you do stay at five-star hotels. It is very nice. Saw snow for the first time in Chicago. I tried to eat it. It was great. <laughs> Hello, welcome to another video on management consulting. In this video, I'll share some perspective into what it's like to work in consulting from different dimensions. So everything from the day-to-day -day job, skill development, travel, lifestyle, compensation, all of that good stuff. My goal is for you to understand what it's like to work in consulting so that you can figure out whether or not it's a fitting or enjoyable job for you. Quick introduction on who I am. My name's Linda, I'm 23. I work at one of the MBB consulting firms. I'm coming up on about two years there. <laughs> what else did I write? I'm based out of San Francisco. The kinds of work I focus on are consumer retail, TMT specifically, digital marketplaces, and consumer tech, Web3, creative economy, and metaverse work. But I've also done some work with financial institutions like banks and PE firms. I primarily focus on growth strategy and marketing strategy. I am constantly asked, What's management consulting? What do you do as a management consultant? How do you know what you need to know for your job? Let me give a 20 second introduction to what management consulting actually is. So management consultants essentially are hired in to help an organization think through their problems. The types of problems that management consultants solve are really broad. This can be anything from revenue growth, product development, international expansion, organizational changes, product development, tech transformations, honestly any kind of business related problem you can think of. So as you can imagine, you learn a lot on the job as a management consultant. Project teams work together from anywhere between two weeks to six months and the length of the project really depends on the type of problem that you're solving. All right, first topic I wanna to talk about is skill development in consulting. So let me preface this really quickly. You don't go into management consulting to make money. You're probably going to earn more as an investment banker or a software engineer. That said, I think management consulting is one of the best places to learn how to think critically, strategically, and to gain a really broad skill set. That's personally why I chose management consulting. In consulting, you learn a lot and there's an emphasis on learning quickly. And what's great about consulting is that a lot of mentorship is given to junior consultants to train them up across all types of skills. I feel like after every single project, I was kind of a new person because I was so much smarter and more effective. In management consulting, you develop both hard skills and soft skills. Hard skills consist of data analysis, building models, triangulating market sizes, and then soft skills are more people focused. So executive communication, working with senior management on the client side, managing your vendors and third party resources to get your job done. Every single project is also different in terms of the kind of problem you're solving and the industry you're likely working in. And so every single project gives you an opportunity to develop new skills or to use those same skills in a new environment. The skills you learn on a consulting engagement are very closely tied to the type of project you're working on. If you're on a classic growth strategy engagement, then you're likely thinking about competitors and doing competitor analysis, running large scale surveys on customers to understand customer sentiment towards that company, building a financial model to project revenue and profits. However, if you're on a tech transformation project, that's more long-term and that requires more implementation work and an implementation mindset. So with that, you're probably working more closely with clients and doing more project management and client collaboration. If you're on a due diligence, which is a very intense kind of project, which usually lasts around two to three weeks, you're very quickly helping an investment firm understand whether or not an investment is worth X amount of dollars. And so you're thinking about potential mergers acquisition, thinking about what long-term payoffs are for an investment in a certain portfolio company. And there's also a very heavy quantitative aspect where you're building financial models to support your thesis. I kind of think of consultants like a Swiss army knife. You're expected to be sharp and versatile and they kind of just plop you in a different project and you figure out what you need to do and how to do it well really quickly. Let's talk about subject matter and working in different industries while you're in consulting. Every single project gives you the chance to explore different industries. So you can try everything from automobile to consumer to tech to finance to solar panels, literally anything. You're given this amazing chance for two to three years to just explore, learn, and work hard. What's interesting is that in consulting, you do certain types of projects. So transformation, marketing, growth strategy, product development, and what you learn in consulting is that the process for a particular type of project is the same regardless of industry, whereas the way to execute and achieve that 
quote unquote goal may look different by industry. So what I mean is crafting a growth strategy is very similar for a tech company versus a consumer retail company, but the way to go about executing that actual growth strategy may look different. So for example, a consumer tech client might have to think about new distribution channels to grow their sales, whereas for a consumer retail company, it might be about e-commerce or direct to consumer as the best way for them to grow the company. Management consulting gives you the chance to try out different industries and from there you get to understand what are similarities between different industries and what are the industry specific nuances. I think that's a very unique perspective that 20 something year olds don't usually get exposure to at jobs outside of consulting. Alright, let's talk about work-life balance, travel, lifestyle, all of that good stuff. So this is heavily dependent on the firm that you're at and the type of project that you're working on, but hours can range from anywhere between 8 to 10 hours to 14 to 16 hours. Typically you're working a 10 hour day. I have a video called Day in the Life of a Management Consultant, so you can check that out if you're curious. I break down what I do hour to hour every single week. But on a typical week, let's say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you're working around 10 to 12 hours. On Thursdays, you're working around 8 hours, and on Fridays, you're working around 6 to 8 hours. Thursdays and Fridays are lighter because uh, consultants are typically traveling away from the client site and back to their home office. You're definitely working very hard in consulting, but like I mentioned previously, you're learning so much that all the hours feel worth it and you're given so much guidance. The other thing about working long hours is that it's different if you're bored versus not bored. In management consulting, all of the work is very thought stimulating and very interesting. And so I feel like you're never bored on the job and so the hours don't feel as long as they are because you're learning so much and you're intellectually stimulated. Let's talk travel. So back in the day with traditional management consulting before the pandemic, consultants would usually travel between Monday to Thursday and that was every single week. With the pandemic, you shifted to more of a hybrid lifestyle where you're traveling some weeks, working from home some weeks, co-locating at a local office some weeks, and I think this is really beneficial because traveling was really exhausting. Like you, you're eating, you're sleeping, you're working out with, like all over the place, and you're always in a new environment. And I personally found that exhausting, but consulting has become a lot more flexible with traveling these days. In my personal experience, I've traveled half the time and, and worked from home or a local office half the time. If you're a newer consultant, I would recommend spending more time in person because you actually maximize learning that way. And it's also really fun to be in person with your team in the team room, even if it's long hours because you just get to know them really well. And with the whole management consulting meme, yes, you do stay at five-star hotels. It is very nice. Your meals are expense. It is quite bougie, I'm not going to lie. Like you go from being a broke college student to having all of these niceties at your disposal. And yes, it's crazy. I remember I would always get weird looks when I strolled into nice hotels or airport lounges because I was... I, I clearly look young and no one really expected me to be there. You get to experience the finer things in life, in some senses. <laughs> Traveling is also a really fun experience because you're with your team at that location. Like I visited Christmas markets in Chicago last year and did holiday gift exchanges in New York as well. So lots of memories to create when you're in consulting. I remember I saw snow for the first time in Chicago in a city. It was amazing. It was so amazing. I tried to eat it. It was great. <laughs> growth trajectory in consulting. So I'll break consultants that are two to three years into their job into two buckets. One, the bucket of consultants that leave consulting, and second, the bucket of consultants that stay in consulting. So the first group is a lot more popular. I think around 70 to 80% of consultants leave consulting after their first two to three years. And there are a ton of exit opportunities that these consultants leave to. So that's everything from product management, business development, strategy and operations, investing. It really depends on what that particular person wants. And I think consulting builds such a broad skill set that the number of doors open for you are countless. 
And then there's the 20 to 30 percent of consultants that stay in consulting. And what happens is you get promoted to something called project leader or engagement manager. This is where you're managing consultants as opposed to being the analyst or associate doing the day-to-day -day analysis. This kind of promotion is very unique because rarely does someone in their mid-20s get the opportunity to manage a team and clients and external vendors. And so this particular job as a project leader or project manager is extremely stressful. But again, there's so much hands-on coaching consulting that the growth is totally worth it. That said, this role is very stressful and intense in terms of lifestyle. After a manager, that's around two to three years, you would get promoted to junior partner. And then after another two to three years, you'd be promoted to partner. And that's if you choose to stay in consulting. Lastly, let's talk about compensation. <laughs> So my personal perspective is that you can't put a price on how much you learn. I would have worked at my firm for two years without being paid, completely for free, solely for the learning experience that I was able to get out of it. But luckily I was salaried. This job made me so much smarter and more useful than I ever could have imagined at 23. And I feel incredibly grateful to have this job and I think it's a very unique perk of management consulting. Anyway, I pulled a bunch of compensation data from Glassdoor, so I'll populate that here. Consultants earn around 100K base out of undergrad, and that's without bonus. Post MBAs, which are known as associates, earn around 150K without bonus. One level up, managers earn around 200K. I got a fly just flew in. Okay. Junior partners earn around 300 to 400K, and partners earn how much? Partners earn above a million, anywhere from 1 million to 10 million. And for comparison, I also looked into salaries for popular exit opportunity jobs. So, so the kinds of roles that people take after their first two to three years in consulting. Business development associates earn around 130k on average, and PE associates earn around 200k depending on the firm, the role, size of the fund, etc. This is the approximate range that you can expect to earn after consulting. And this is without keeping in mind growth trajectory, so how steep your salary climbs beyond these immediate post-consulting jobs. The thing that excites me most about consulting is the breadth of opportunities available to you. Like if you want to go to a country and start a tilapia farm, which one of my friends has done, you can go do it because consulting has literally taught you how to build something from the ground up, come up with a strategy and execute it. For example, two weeks ago, I was in Las Vegas looking at my first real estate investment opportunity and I was able to understand everything about real estate investment in one week. Everything from types of homes to look at. I built out a financial model, projecting out 10 years of cash flows. I knew what to look for in a good real estate investment and that's because consulting taught me to have this analytical mindset. And consulting teaches you how to work in a very ambiguous environment and how to maximize success even when you're learning something for the first time. I feel like this kind of skill set and this kind of mindset that consulting gives you is something that you can't put a salary on. All right, so where does this leave you? I think that consulting is the best job that you could have after college because you learn so much, so, so freaking much. I've done projects in consumer retail, in growth strategy, marketing strategy for a digital marketplace, solar panel financing for a bank, metaverse strategy for a consumer retail company, risk transformation for a financial institution, NFT strategy for another retail company, all in less than two years. I've traveled to Chicago, New York, San Diego, Colorado, Rome with my firm and I feel like this place has pushed me more than any other place could have. I think what really matters at the end of the day is how much you've grown and whether or not you're closer to who you want to be and that future self that you envision for yourself. And for me, consulting definitely aided in that. So I hope that you're able to make a more informed decision on what kind of job you want out of college. And I hope that you find consulting a fitting and enjoyable job for you. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you very soon.